circa 1969. Gulzar sir, I think it was for the film Kamoshi, came up with this wonderful lyrics. Hamne dekhi hai un aankhon ki mehkti kush hu. Haat se chuke ise rishton ka insaan ho. Sirf aisaas hai ye ruh se mehsoos karo. प्यार को प्यार के रहने दो कोई नाम नहीं एसेंस ऑफ राज राजकुंडास एट ए एम मेट्रो इज अबाउट एन अनडिफाइंड रिलेशनशिप अ प्लेटोनिक रिलेशनशिप एक्चुअली बिटवीन अ मैन एंड अ वुमन एंड Screaming reality of saying, "Heart se chuke usse rishton ka insaan na do." Asas feel the relationship. This is not just Gulzar's thematic uh, shadow that runs through the movie. He's done some wonderful poetry in the movie, which lifts. the quality in the timber of the movie directed by raj rachakonda it's based on andamai jeevitam a telugu work by malladi venkata krishna murthy story almost a linear simple one liner ria played by nivisha nayar is in hospital expecting the stock to arrive she is in an award she needs medical attention and she presses the panicky button for her sister ira to travel to hyderabad ira is to now travel to hyderabad from nandeed a train journey from nandeed to hyderabad could be the most innocuous one not if the person who has to make the journey is suffering from tachophobia or a fear for speed for trains or a claustrophobia in a train our protagonist ira suffers it small backdrop story as to why she does not truly relevant to the story but she has this huge psychological problem that she cannot travel by train and circumstances in a middle class family in short that her husband umesh played by umesh kamar cannot travel with her by road and so ira played by siami kher will have to travel by train not only does ira come to hyderabad but she also has to travel by a metro train every day from her flat her sister's flat to the hospital to take care of mridula it is on this train that she runs into pritam played by gulshan devaya they both meet every day in the 8 am flight there is a bonding between the two of them a relationship grows understand that ira is happily married to umesh in a typical middle class family where she has two kids a uh, indifferent middle class husband chasing the windmills of life and gulshan is married to mridula played by kalpika ganesh and we know about mridula in the stories that pritam shares with ira from time to time they have a peep into their little past very mundane things about he writing poetry he buying books he selling books he being from a reasonably rich affluent family with a lovely dog and children and she with two children and a husband every 8 am metro they meet up and they almost miss one another when they don't slowly the vistas open up then mrithala wants ira a 
she may be walking out into prohibited territory. Here are questions. This. What is prohibited territory? Emotive? Physical? Honesty? While on the other hand, there's an attempt made by her to go and even meet Mridula. In fact, Pritam takes her to his home to meet Mridula. It does not happen. Why does it happen is the twist to the tale, which you would realize at a later point in time. I think 8 a.m. Metro is a celebration of relationships without having to define them, without having to give them a premise, a definition, a codified space. And this is what makes the film work. It's not a perfect thing. It's an interesting thing. It's a journey worth taking and watching a film for its difference. Also, I, I tried uh, racking my head about man-woman relationships being platonic in Indian cinema and I don't recall any one too many. I remember uh, the situational relationship between Sanjeev Kumar and Jaya Bhaduri in Silsila. More the company of victims than friends by choice. I don't remember any other film and I'd love readers to let me know if there are any where the relationship between the man and the woman is strictly platonic. Here is one. And full marks to Raj Rajakonda for dealing with it without being at any point in time tempted to get them physical with one another. And this is really the high point of the film. Gulshan Devaya as Pritam is as convincing as you would find an Amol Palekar or a Rajkumar or in one of those boy next door roles. Very good. I think uh, somewhere around while Ira, as Ira Siami cared, emotes very well. Her capacity to punch up Gulzar Sab's poetry into poetic uh, versions is missing. That could be a part crucial to why the film doesn't throw up as much conviction as it otherwise should. I would have loved to see a more convincing couple. Maybe a Tabu, maybe a Rajkumar. I'm not casting for uh, Raj Rajakonda. But maybe Raj will sit back someday and ask himself, did I err with just the cast? Should I have got somebody better? I know Raj Rajkonda has gone public and said that no Telugu actor was willing to do this movie. I'm not surprised how many of them have the gumption to do a movie of this kind where you don't have to beat up the villains, you don't have to dance, you don't have to sing, you live a very ordinary life. Not for Telugu actors. They listen to a different orchestra altogether. Full marks to Raj Rachakunda for giving us a nice, good ride on the metro. This is a ride I would suggest for the cost it implies. It's just about a two hour movie. It's got something interesting. It throws up questions and reiterates what Gulzar Saab had said. I have acknowledged contributions from Dattu and Abhinav and sign off with the recommendation that you do see 8am Metro. Bye-bye.